All right, Michael, thank you. So let me want to introduce a couple of more people. Um, Pat Barrett is one of the principles of applied CAX. Um, he's been working in various capacities since 1996 between engineering and manufacturing. And then we're going to have John Kern with us as well. And John Kern has had 30 plus years experience at Dependable Pattern Works. Um, he has 18 years experience programming and now he's managing the systems there and he was very heavily involved as far as the different ink or different um, things it took to successfully implement a five axis machine. What I'm going to do is go ahead and hand it over to Pat and um, John I really appreciate you joining us and I think it'll really help everyone on the, the webinar to hear from someone who's actually been through this and um, again thanks a lot. So Pat I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thanks Ian. Uh, John, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you bet. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you again for joining us this morning. I know you guys are busy over there. Um, I don't know which is worse to see uh, in your slide rolls of when you started doing this or how many years you've been doing this. When, <laughs> when I saw my own. But, uh, yeah. Regardless. Where did the time go? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Regardless, we've been doing this for a little while. Um, well, the, the whole point of this is you guys were gracious enough uh, to join us uh, in addition to uh, undertaking the transition you guys have uh, been working through over at Dependable. Um, and I, I'm going to kind of serve as a talk show host interviewer, if you will. And um, I just wanted to kind of open it up with a question of, you know, tell us a little bit about Dependable Pattern Works and uh, the types of industries and uh, types of work you guys do. All right. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. We're, we're glad to participate in something like this. Um, it truly has been quite an experience. You know, we've been doing this. Um, we purchased our first um, CNC machines back in 1982 with a couple of Mazak vertical three-axis machines. And a uh, seat of, at the time, it was Mikado uh, Unigraphics 1. <laughs> Wow. And um, so we've been doing this, I guess it's been about 32 years or something now. Um, at any rate, um, Dependable was started in 1933. We have approximately 25,000 square feet of manufacturing floor space. The majority of our business is for tooling for the foundry industry. Primarily, there's a couple of large tooling our large foundries here in the Northwest that we do a great deal of business for them. Investment, casting, tooling, cutting, aluminum is one of our primary. Um, we just cut a lot of 70-75 um, aluminum for investment casting. Um, tooling, we make a lot of um, Things for the construction and mining industries where we make uh, wood patterns for them. Our claim to fame, I like to say, uh, is the fact that we work with such diverse materials. We work with woods, plastics, plasters, urethanes, rubbers, fiberglass, Kevlar, carbon fiber. Many of our customers are often putting together projects where they use several different materials and we can do it all in one shop so it's kind of like one-stop shopping we do work with some some of the um, most highly respected research and development facilities in the world and unfortunately I can't name them <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's okay well 80 years of history um, that's a long time first you know congratulations this isn't the first time your company, I'm sure, has, has seen a change of uh, manufacturing technologies like this. Um, you mentioned some of the machines you've worked with in the past. I'm sure you've got you know, three-axis, four-axis machines uh, in there, so you're no stranger to CNC. What, what was the attraction or what started you guys looking down the path of multi-axis, five-axis machines? Uh, was there any kind of tipping point or something that happened? Well, 
it's actually been a very long process. We've been looking at five axis machines for 10 years, and we have one large horizontal milling machine that uh, we cut a lot of wood with. And it's getting, um, you know, it needs to be replaced. We've been looking at doing a five axis machine with a very large envelope, possibly up to 15 feet. Oh. Well, that's a formidable investment, and I think that uh, for the president, um, shelling out the money for something so large without necessarily having experience is just something that uh, we could just never make that leap. So we've been looking at it and studying it and knowing that we need to do something, and yet um, Ellison came in and talked to us about the DMG machines and really, I think, changed our whole thought process of what we needed to do. And that is we realized that conceivably by purchasing a lower cost, smaller five axis machine and getting an education, we knew it was going to be a long learning curve and it truly is. Um, all of our programmers have over 20 years experience programming and um, it's, you know, it's formidable and everything that's been said before me speaking about needing help, <laughs> it's absolutely true. Um, we would not have possibly been able to do it ourselves without the help of of Michael Grant from your your company doing this because he's been invaluable. I, as I mentioned, I've, I've been involved in the post-processor development here, and three-axis uh, post-processor is child's play. You know, the five-axis stuff, it's just beyond me at this point. So to have Michael take that over, he had experience with the DMG. He had been working with the DMU-50. Um, it was just a wonderful fit um, there. Good. He's he's certainly happy to hear that. Um, so you you'd mentioned a lot of the parts you guys do are big stuff, and if you walk around your shop, you know you 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 mentioned a big variety of parts, big variations in sizes, big big ginormous patterns down to the small stuff. Um, and you guys opted to go with a smaller version of the of the five axis to kind of I guess wet your feet maybe. Um, when the machine finally showed up on the floor. What did you guys realize, or what was kind of the, the realization that the company had when the machine you know, showed up on the first day there? Um, it's, uh, it's just quite, it's so different. Um, again, I've been around this for 30 years now, and um, the five-axis machine, uh, we just, none of us were just complete newbies to it. None of us had experience with it. And so it's pretty formidable as you watch it operate and function and, you know, as you try to get your arms around the programming, um, it's a formidable process. There's a learning curve. It has really done a lot for us to just rethink how you approach things machining-wise. Now that you've got the capability, it just sort of takes a complete rethink of how to even approach machining it because you've got tools at your disposal that you've never had before. And so I find that it's very interesting to talk to the guys that are doing the programming right now and they're saying that, you know, the approach towards machining has just changed, you know, their thinking has changed radically on how to, how to best, you know, remove material. And some of the results have been, you know, quite incredible. Um, our primary reason for getting into this was just as John Goes explained, it was to reduce setups. We often are setting up parts that we make anywhere from three to six setups on components that goes in, go into tools. So consequently, that's just wasted time effectively compared to a multi-axis machine like this. And um, we've seen results that are um, pretty phenomenal. Something that would have taken us a day to do or more 
you know, we've been able to cut that down into an hour or something around that range. I mean, the savings have been in the order of five to ten times faster on some machining processes for us. And that's pretty phenomenal. It's crazy, you that's know, impressive. how much faster. Hmm. Um, the, point, so you, the point that I'd like to make, and just for, for everybody, we do everything one-off. We're not, for the most part, everything that we're doing is just one-off. Our whole deal has got to be, we've got to create a successful program the first hmm. time. There's no testing. There's no nothing. Um, with the simulation software and it being so accurate, um, you know, you can simulate everything and see it accurately. We have not yet gotten to the point where we have all of our tool holders implemented in this simulation, and that is critical. Um, we still smoke some parts um, by not having the tool length and, and the simulation, you know, exactly set right from what the guy, you know, programmed it. And so, you know, you can shank tools and things like that that can happen. So we realize that we've got to, you know, get all the tool holders and get the tool lengths of the exact simulation to keep that stuff from happening. Good, good points to consider. Thank you. Um, you guys have had the machine now for approximately six months or so, is that correct? Right. When, how long did it take you when the, you know from the machine showed up, you got installed until you were actually making you know your your first good parts were coming off the machine? Um, you know, um, I don't remember. I mean, I'm guessing it was about a month, mm -hmm. some before we ever had anything that we did successfully. Part of that was just kind of, you know, the coordination of the training. We, you know, we got some training and um, and our, our issue at the time is we had a huge backlog of things that, that, you know, which is why we purchased the five axis machine in the first place. We had a huge backlog, maybe a year's worth of, of product that we thought that we could take advantage of, of this. And so um, when we brought it in, we were quite busy just keeping machines running and getting the work out of here. So we really had a tough situation to deal with as far as training. We couldn't bring Michael in for on-site training. We thought that, you know, certainly that would be the best way. But we couldn't bring him in and bring him in and tie up all of, we have three programmers right now. We couldn't tie up all three programmers for all day even because we have to keep things moving through the shop, keep keep the product moving through the shop. So we were kind of really at a constraint, constraint at the time that we brought um, training in because we couldn't really focus on training like we would like to. We had to just sort of take it in small bites and spread it out even in having Michael come in every couple of days, you know, which is not optimum as far as learning, but that's kind of what just the, you know, the needs of keeping the product moving out the door. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big change. It's a business process change.